A Jesuit is a disciple of the Black Pope. They swear an oath to obey their commander regardless of what the command is, even to smashing a baby's skull, which they must do without hesitation. There are 18,000 known Jesuit priests in the world. This group of insane monsters have taken over the church. They take an oath and swear under penalty of the most horrid death. It is entirely a Talmud abomination. I said regarding oaths, simply let your nay be nay and your yea be yea. Anything more is evil. Matthew 5.37 and James 5.12, but let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. All Jesuit are evil. The Pope, a Jesuit, becomes the Vicar of Christ. And in Latin, the letters total 666. Now we dropped off the apostolic letter written by Pope Benedict the 16th to the Jesuit headquarters. From our home in Tugum, Queensland, it is 8,600 nautical miles to the Jesuit headquarters and is the age I was when my daughter Tracy Lee was conceived 27th of, Ju of July in 1967. 8,600 days old. This is Vicar of Christ in Latin, adding the number value for a gematria of 666. The Jesuit Oath. When a Jesuit of the minor rank is to be elevated to command, he is conducted into the chapel of the cov convent of the order, where there are only three others present, the principal or superior standing in front of the altar. On either side stands a monk, one of whom holds a banner of yellow and white, which are the papal colours and the other a black banner with a dagger and red cross, above a skull and crossbones, with the word Inri and below them the words Iustum, Neca, Regis and Impious, the meaning of which is, it is just to exterminate or annihilate impious or heretical kings, governments or rulers. Upon the floor is a red cross at which the postulant or candidate kneels. The superior hands him a small black crucifix which he takes in his left hand and presses to his heart. And the superior at the same time presents to him a dagger which he grasps by the blade and holds the point against his heart, the superior still holding it by the hilt and thus addresses the postulant. Superior, my son. Heretofore you have been taught to act the dissembler. Among Roman Catholics, to be a Roman Catholic and to be a smart spy even among your own brethren, to believe no man, to trust no man. Among the Reformers, to be a Reformer. Among the Huguenots, to be a Huguenot. Among the Calvinists, to be a Calvinist. Among other Protestants, generally to be a Protestant. And obtaining their confidence to seek even to preach from their pulpits and to denounce with all the vehemence in your nature and our holy religion and the Pope, and even to descend so low as to become a Jew among Jews, that you might be enabled to gather together all information for the benefit of your order as a faithful soldier of the Pope. And that is the Black Pope. You have been taught to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred between communities provinces, states that were at peace and incite them to deeds of blood, involving them in war with each other and to create revolutions and civil wars in countries that were independent and prosperous, cultivating the arts and the sciences and enjoying the blessings of peace. Straight out of the Talmud. To take sides with the combatants and to act secretly with your brother Jesuit, who might be engaged on the other side, but openly opposed to that with which you might be connected, only that the church might be the gainer in the end. 
in the conditions fixed in the treaties for peace and that the end justifies the means. And so Francis is undoubtedly the Antichrist. You have been taught your duty as a spy to gather all statistics, facts and information in your power from every source to ingratiate yourself into the confidence of the family circle of Protestants and heretics of every class and character as well as that of the merchant, the banker, the lawyer among the schools and universities, in parliaments and legislatures and the judiciaries and councils of state and to be all things to all men for the Pope's sake whose servants we are unto death. And now the extreme oath of the Jesuit. Quoting, I, now in the presence of Almighty God, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Blessed Michael, the Archangel, the Blessed Saint John the Baptist, the Holy Apostle Saint Peter and Saint Paul and all the saints and sacred hosts of heaven. And to you, my ghostly father, the superior general of the Society of Jesus, founded by Saint Ignatius Loyola in the pontificate of Paul III, and continued to the present, do by the womb of the Virgin, the matrix of God, and the rod of Jesus Christ, declare and swear that His Holiness, the Pope, is Christ's vice-regent, and is the true and only head of the Catholic or universal church throughout the earth, and that by virtue of the keys of binding and loosing given to his holiness by my Saviour Jesus Christ, he hath power to depose heretical kings, princes, states, commonwealths and governments, all being illegal without his sacred confirmation, and that they may, be, may safely be destroyed. Therefore, to the utmost of my power, I shall and will defend this doctrine of his holiness, right and custom against all usurpers of the heretical or Protestant authority whatever, especially the Lutheran of Germany, Holland, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, and the now pretended authority and churches of England and Scotland, and branches of the same now established in Ireland and on the continent of America and elsewhere, and all adherents in regard that they be usurped and heretical, opposing the sacred mother church of Rome, I do now renounce and disown any allegiance as due to any heretical king, prince or state, named Protestants or liberals, or obedience to any of the laws, magistrates or officers. I furthermore promise and declare that I will when opportunity present, make and wage relentless war, secretly or openly, against all heretics, Protestants and liberals, as I am directed to do, to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex or condition, and that I will hang, waste, boil, flay, strangle and bury alive these infamous heretics rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women and crush their infants' heads against the walls in order to annihilate forever their execrable race. So we've got hang, waste, boil, slay, strangle and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women and crush their infants' heads against the wall. This is a, an oath, this is the oath, sworn by Francis. Is there any doubt that Francis had no problem then imprisoning Pope Benedict XVI, kidnapping Sister Maria della Rosa, Father Giuseppe Ciavello and charging him with treason? Later, we are sent emails from his staff that Father Giuseppe has been shot dead. It goes on, so dreadful an oath in the name of Mary and Jesus, it is beyond my comprehension. Continuing, that when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poisoned cup, the strangulating cord, the steel of the poniard yard, or the leaden bullet, regardless of the honour, rank, dignitary, or dignity or authority of the person or persons. Whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time 
may be directed to do so by any agent of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith of the Society of Jesus. Hmm, they most certainly have been trying to kill Benedict. Francis swore this oath, and now he holds the position of Pope, King and Black Pope. He is the unholy trinity of the devil. The Antichrist's target was the highest position in the Catholic Church. He, a Jesuit monster, and he alone has fulfilled prophecy of Revelation, the last authority, and must be the only 666 possible. Why? The book of Revelation is not speaking about every pope who has been the vicar of Christ, meaning God in the flesh with all the power of Almighty God. It is Bergoglio, the cardinal who knew Christ, had been talking with Benedict XVI and was at that moment checkmated. He could not be Pope. When the former, that is Benedict, announced he had met Christ, it ended the church right at that moment. Therefore, in 2013, two forces came headlong. The most evil organisation placed on the throne of the Vatican State a king, pope and black pope. Satan in the flesh, the unholy trinity, over 1.2 billion people. The first Jesuit general to become pope who was then made the Black Pope as the former Black Pope stood down in favour of Francis as he holds the highest position a Jesuit had ever achieved in the Church. The devil finally became the unholy trinity. Why did your Mario Bergoglio choose the name Francis? The four words have an English gematria of 271 and means in Hebrew possessor from Genesis 14:19, And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the Most High God, the Possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou should say, I have made Abram rich. John on the island of Patmos is carried away in the spirit and shown the following. Quoting, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-coloured beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. That's the Revelation 17.3. The woman is Francis. All souls are female. The church is female. The espoused to Christ, the chaste virgin, the reward, it presently a harlot. It's all to do with the Catholic Church and no other, regardless of what any person, scholar or preacher thinks. On the left, Aldolfo Nicholas, figurehead general to divert attention from Pope Francis being the new Jesuit general. And then Peter Hans Kolvenbach, the former black pope, Francis was appointed the black pope. Pope. The White Pope is now the Black Pope, the Jesuit General, the Scarlet Beast of the Revelation. Can you imagine I as Jesus condoning such stupidity, or can you imagine Pope Benedict being a Jesuit? For even if you do not believe I am the Christ, Benedict does. And I am in Rome, standing before these murderous thugs, challenging Francis to send his assassins 
to try and kill me. I have challenged the Jews, the CIA, MI6, any organisation. I have said for 30 years, name the dark alley, I will be there. 1992, I spoke to Mossad in the Israeli embassy in Ottawa, told them who I was and I would leave a canoe on the end of the dock, a rope and cinder block along with the latitude and longitude where Sprout Lake in Port Alberni is 666 feet deep to dump the body. They came and fired shots into the house late at night. I walked out to my Pontiac Firebird, opened the door, sat with it open and played Johnny Mathis singing Twelfth of Never. So they could walk up and put a bullet in the back of my head. They drove off. Later they tried cyanide. In Australia punched a stent through my kidney. Slowly I bled until I was weak, drained of most of my blood, refused transfusions and then miraculously recovered in an hour. Now the tribulation prophecy applies only to Pope Benedict XVI. From his election, April 19, 2005, until his official date of retirement, a period of 7.863 years of tribulation. Hebrews 7.863, as 7.721, by permutation, elevation, excellency. Leading to Isaiah 60.15, Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency a joy of many generations. This verse has an English gematria of 1283, Hebrew 1283 from the feminine of 7451 is in trouble. In 2005, the election of Benedict was a narrow victory over Bergoglio. To their horror, the Jesuits know exactly what had occurred. Prophecy defeated them. Revelation 1711 was their target. But why? Quoting, And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. Firstly, the hidden message, the English value of 872 from 575 and 3708, to consider attentively, look, the Pope is automatically responsible for the sins of the Church. The Vatican is a homosexual Freemason, Lucifer-worshipping, child-molesting, satanic cult. I was in Port Alberni just before, during and after a Jesuit priest posing as a minister of the Methodist Church and later expelled, Kevin Annette. He laid the groundwork to bring charges of wrongdoing, child molestation, homosexuality and genocide of native children in the schools and orphanages. At that time, I drove a taxi and had an open ear to the ground speaking with natives of their situation. Annette was their witness to newspaper headlines concerning charges laid against me. The Alberni Valley Times, run by Freemasonry, the headlines read, Man threatens to kill his wife for not saying he is Christ. Annette was not interested. His task was to gather information and charge Pope Benedict XVI and have the ITCCL, being the International Tribunal of the Court of Common Law, which found him guilty and sentenced to 25 years in jail. This became the rumoured reason he quit and why 12 months before the Vatican was renovating a monastery for him to reside in, where the arrest warrant could not be enforced. All very neat indeed. So what does it tell us? It was a setup, the preparation of a residence, number two, the Da Vinci Code, promoting church treachery. Number three, the charges against Benedict XVI. Four, his broken wrist in Mexico, perhaps he was tripped. Five, his arthritic pains, all caused by poisoning his food. Six, rumours he was advised to, to quit to avoid the ITCCL. Now I spoke to him and he was disgusted with the filth in the church. Talking with the papal office, I asked Father Giuseppe if the Holy Father knew about the ITCCL 25 year sentence against him. He said he had no idea. I said it appears he has been kept in the dark about many things going on in the world and Giuseppe confirmed it as he was always kept busy with other things. He had no idea how the Jesuit carry out their missions or of the Jesuit oath. The man is filled with love as Jesus taught. 
After Francis was told directly about myself and Vatican III, Benedict apologised to me for failing me. But please forgive Francis. He is more Christ-like than himself. That was his estimation of the devil. Benedict XVI will be the greatest Pope in history. He will serve myself and nothing escapes me. He will do as I ask and said in his apostolic letter to learn from me. The reality is the Jesuits are an extension of the Talmud influence with the same infiltration and deception. The Jesuits are therefore the sword point to move their god Lucifer into control of the largest church in the world and say nothing against their masters in Israel in Israel, as the rabbis are way more intelligent than the Jesuit, and in particular Francis, who is a moron. The Vatican came into existence in 1929 on February the 11th, and precisely 84 years later, Benedict XVI announced he was retiring. He had arthritic pain, was exhausted from his overbearing schedules, and disgusted by the filth in the church that he had been unable to do anything about. Now, the Malachi prophecy ends with the next pope being Petrus Romanus. The verse states, one of the seven will become the eighth, this is back in the Revelation, being the new pope under Christ as the Vatican will be destroyed and every foul abomination wiped out. I renamed Benedict Petrus Romanus, Peter II. He wrote his apostolic letter stating Christ was back and his new name was Peter II. Next to slide excerpts. is the prayer, let us pray in English. Almighty and everlasting Lord, we ask you to guide the Holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church under the guidance of Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, who is Lord. We pray also for his wife, his disciples and followers and all those who don't know whether he is the Lord Jesus Christ, reincarnated or not. All I have to say is this. Have faith in what Jesus tells you and do as he tells you, as Mother Mary said to the waiters during the wedding feast at Cana. Do what he says and make it your mission. Amen, I say to you, believe in Christ. So there is Benedict imploring to the world of Catholics to do what the Christ, Brian Lenigo, Lightly Marshall, tells you to do. Now, Matthew twenty four twenty nine. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now, according to Dr. Bob Teal, he a well-versed gentleman on church and Bible prophecy, he says the Malachi prophecy of the 111 popes, an Irish bishop visiting Rome in 1143, had a vision of the coming 111 popes. Dr. Teal assumes... 112 popes by the mention of Petrus Romanus. He is unaware that Pope Benedict XVI became 111th Pope and will become the last named Petrus Romanus. He concludes it is possibly Francis. However, prophecy of the end time, the tribulation and rapture are confused. The rapture is not biblical. It was invented in England by Darby, a theologian, around 1850, supposedly inspired by the Jesuits since then has been taken as scripture and dominates all Protestant churches. The rapture is not Catholic. It is the Pope Benedict XVI who has suffered seven years of tribulation, attempting to rid the church of its filth, prompting him to retire. February 11, 2013, he announced effective the 28th of February, 11 days later, he began talking to Christ, and then two days after that, Francis was elected Pope. Benedict could be said to just sneak in prophetically, two days before the Antichrist was elected by a conclave dominated by the homosexual body, Israel, which dominates the Vatican.
Benedict was reborn, the reincarnate of Simon Peter, on April the 16th, 1927, and I spoke to him on March 11th, 2013. The distance in time between the two, 31376 days, 3137, in the Greek concordance is Maria or Miriam, the name of six Christian females, Mary. We see that from his rebirth date, April 16, 1927, until the day prior to the Vatican, became the Vatican, which was February 9, 1929, is 666 days, which indicates he will become Pope and defeat the Vatican and be the last Pope left alive of the seven in that 84-year period when he retired, fulfilling prophecy of Revelation 17.11. So the Revelation 17.11 breaks down as follows. The Vicar of Christ means 666, but it is irrelevant as all popes have that title, good or bad. There are seven popes during the 84-year period of the Vatican's existence and ended with Benedict retiring February 28, 2013. It predicts one will be the eighth pope, but not of the Vatican as it will be destroyed. Otherwise, simply reinstating Benedict would not fit prophecy. He would be the seventh and eighth of the Vatican, not of the seven. So the 666 beast pope can only be the break between the seven before the eighth pope after the Vatican is destroyed. Revelation 17.11, quoting, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh and goes into perdition. The devil is the beast. It lives through men and must attain the highest position. Number one, once it becomes Pope, elected by the beast, point two, the church cardinals, then the prophecy was in place. Point three, with Francis proclaiming to Benedict the sixteenth that the man he believes is Christ is not Christ, he then arrests Benedict to keep him quiet and kidnaps his friend and confidant, Father Giuseppe and Sister Maria. Prophecy fulfilled, points 1, 2 and 3. Francis denies Christ and is the Antichrist. The John prophecy of 1 John 2.22. Next is point 4, yet to occur. Francis dies and goes into perdition and then point 5 can occur. Benedict become the Pope of the new church under Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, which is myself, and have already named my new Pope, the eighth of the church as Petrus Romanus, Latin for Peter II of Rome. We have the reincarnate of Simon Peter, the half-brother of myself, the son of Mary and Joseph in a natural conception. He inherited from the womb the imprint of myself, the Holy Spirit, my soul being the Almighty, the soul being the Holy Spirit. When a woman conceives, her first pregnancy causes the wall of her womb to memorise the first child. The second pregnancy by Joseph, her child is similar to the first baby, and therefore Simon Peter retained the same memory of our mother's womb. When Peter reincarnated, as did I, he retained the sole imprint of the former, and his life was preordained, as was mine. My mother, Daphne Golightly, gave birth to Ronald, father by Reginald, conceived out of wedlock, born February 25th, 1935. Then her next child, June, born August the 18th, 1938, looks like her brother, and father, Reginald. Daphne had a kidney problem and was in St. Margaret's Maternity Hospital for 13 weeks, advised not to have any more children, this was after June, the Catholic birth control abstinence. Reginald was a handsome man. It was wartime, all available young men at war. He was in a protected industry, truck driver. The ladies propositioned him and he obliged. That is what Ronald, my brother, told me. Now, Reginald's brother, Jack, was taller and also very handsome. 
He was into the ladies as well and was finally divorced by his wife because of it. Daphne and Reginald were keeping to abstinence, yet her doctor tells her she is pregnant. The last sexual contact was February the 5th, 1943, and so my rebirth was expected to be November 12th, 1943, at the latest. But it was January the 11th, 1944. Now note the weeks, 484 number being the completed pyramid in feet, the 340 from 303 and a derivative of 2537 to restore, renew, regenerate, new, young, Hebrew 3, 340, hence to be hostile, be an enemy. Now this period of time, the 340 days, was 0 0.930 years. And Adam lived 930 years, and the 93rd day of the year was April the 3rd in 33 AD. April the 3rd, the date of the cross, 33 AD. 930 in Greek, from 9 to 8, a torturer, tormentor. 4847 is to be bitter, be moved with cola, hate. This is exactly what Reginald was operating by. He was my stepfather, like the virgin who was pregnant with me via the Holy Spirit. Joseph was not happy at all, but had the advantage of being a righteous man. Gabriel assured him his espoused was to give birth to the Holy One of God. In this case, Reginald was far from righteous. He frequented opium dens, smoked and drank, often drunk. Finally, my mother put her foot down, according to my half-brother Ronald, no more over the fence with the ladies. Reginald, my stepfather, was not the sharpest stick in the pile, but could count, and he knew he could not have been my father, and from as far back as I can recall, he never ceased from being cruel and sarcastic, referring to me with a kind of strange glee as the mistake. Not his, my mother's, with Uncle Jack. I met Uncle Jack once. He lived a few kilometres from us, yet Reginald avoided him and his other brothers. Perhaps an argument took place. Jack denied it, and that was that, hostilities from then on. My father was not Reginald. He was right. I, as the Almighty, cannot have a father. So I am my own ghost, Jesus. The reincarnation of Benedict remained the highest ranking man in the church as a former pope prior to the new pope, elected March 13th, two days after the former realised he was talking to Christ in Australia. At that moment, the former vicar of Christ never was 666 to be replaced by the Antichrist, the man, 666 himself, the beast. Benedict was the true vicar of Christ, replaced by the false, the 666. The fact that Benedict recognised Christ is prophecy, and as such his responsibility is to announce it and ends the church under a pope passing the reins of the church over to the Creator God in the flesh. Isaiah 7.14 and Matthew 123. Although there has been many popes who were of the devil, 666 did not apply. They were not the devil. One of the Malachi predictions was the final pope will lead the church through many tribulations. And so it is the church leader that suffers the seven year tribulation, he being the righteous Pope Benedict XVI who retired as he was disgusted by the filth of the church. He sur had surrounded himself with a few people he could trust. He is the Christ figure. The world media and all governments know he will hand the church over to Christ when he finally meets him. The whore is the wife, the woman, sitting on seven hills of Rome. Matthew 24, 29, immediately after the tribulation of those days, 
shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Translation. Then after the sun darkened, etc., shall appear the sign of the Son of Man, meaning a man... as I was as Jesus, coming, that is, the sign of, in the heavens. See the sign confirming the Son of Man, a human being. Who is a liar but that he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledges the Son had the Father also. It's 1 John 2, 22 and 23. Francis denied the true vicar of Christ, Benedict, who as the vicar speaks as God Almighty, and he said he had met Christ, the man, myself. So anyone that speculates otherwise, contradicting the true church, the Catholic Pope, it must be remembered, Vatican II was put together to open the door to heretics. In other words, go against the righteousness of the church majority, bring in the Jews and all religions as being a path to heaven regardless of Jesus the Creator, as Jesus will be no longer God in the flesh, the Creator. Revelation 13. The false prophet will rise, the whole world will be deceived by him. This last man will be a false pope. He is the only possible 666. He is trying to be the 112th pope, but cannot be as it ends with Benedict, the one alive of the seven popes of the Vatican. 111 is the number of Benedict, which Francis has removed by force. 111 and Francis name number, which is 201, added together is... 312. My name is 312 in English Gematria. Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall, 44, 69, 115, and 84 all added together. 312. The number of a man. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. 312. And his number is 603 score and 6. Greek concordance 6, 5516 and 100, 5516 and 3 score, 5516 and 6, 5516. Add the 4. In other words, 4 times 5516 equals 22064. Count them as days. Add them to the rebirth date of the Christ, January 11th, 1944, and it equals the transition of Venus on June the 8th, 2004. And this is the Lucifer prophecy. Isaiah 14:12 has Lucifer trying to be the morning star, and then the Revelation 2:28, and I will give him the morning star. Revelation 22:16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. These two verses have an English gematria, 1770, when counted as days, is 4.846 years, which is the height of the completed pyramid in Catholic prophecy. There are two popes. One will betray the church, the other righteous who will flee Rome and travel to Germany. Prophecy states, four cardinals will rescue him from imprisonment in Rome. So on our journey from Australia, landing in Frankfurt, Germany, driving to Turin, Italy to see the Shroud of Turin, important as the Pope had asked for a photo and concluded my face matched the image on the Shroud. So this is all back on March the 10th, before, the day before, talking with the Christ, 
Benedict saw the photo of the image overlay, photo overlay, Brian and a Galatly Marshall, and concluded he is most definitely the image within the Shroud of Turin. I told His Holiness Mary had six children after I, Jesus, was born, the eldest Simon Peter. He reincarnated as Joseph Aloysius Ratzinger, becoming Benedict the sixteenth. The final pope must be the reincarnate of Simon Peter, and is why I renamed Benedict Petrus Romanus, or Peter the second. He concluded my face was the shroud, and he then met with Francis, it was March 23rd, 2013, telling him Christ was back. Now Francis immediately should have reconvened the cardinal still in Rome and recalled any that were not, as the church had found Christ. The Jews work on a calendar. This year is 5773. It means in the concordance, perversity, perverse, and it ends August the 31st. The Zohar prophecies of the Jews stated 700 years ago the Messiah would make his appearance in the year 5773. Now Vatican, February the 11th, 1929, when it was a done deal, it was formed. Francis' rebirth date, December 17, 1936, is 409 weeks, 2866 days, or 7.846 years. Greek 409, a murderer. Hebrew 2866, dismay, casting down, and 7846. Hebrew, a departure from right, that is sin, revolter, that turn aside. Francis will be 76.705 years old on the end of the Jewish Zohar prophecy, August 31st, 2013. Rupture, a pang, figuratively ruin, breaking, destruction. Hebrews 767 7 from 717 in the sense of gathering a box, ark, chest, coffin. Greek 767 is unmarked. So we can arrange an unmarked coffin. As Daphne conceived of my Holy Ghost on April the 6th, 1943, the same date as the resurrection in 33 AD, the 5th, Australia is head by a day, then how old was Francis when his worst nightmare was reborn? 2301 days, 328 weeks, 5 days, or 6.299 years. The numbers. 6299, that is ransom, to sever, to release, preserve, deliver by any means. Ransom, that are to be, let be, redeem, rescue, surely. To redeem from the devil. Greek 629, from a compound of 575 and 3083, the act ransom in full, riddance or especially Christian salvation, deliverance, redemption. Then we've got Luke 21, 28, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. All was a prophecy for this generation, this day, now. Isaiah 13, 14, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Therefore I have paid the ransom price to the devil, and it will be destroyed placed in an unmarked coffin and forgotten. The greatest, the single greatest and anxiously, anxiously awaited announcement by a pontiff in history, the return of Jesus as predicted in prophecy, came as a man like a thief in the night. Then on April 3rd, 2013, the most extraordinary event took place. The Antichrist Francis and his men forced their way into the papal household of Pope Benedict XVI and arrested him and his staff. His crime of treason was His Holiness had told the world in an apostolic letter 
Christ had been revealed, his name, Brian Leonard Golightly Marshall. Francis was 76.29 years old, meaning to transport into captivity, bring away, carry, carry away, lead, lead away, take captive, drive, take away. Now we turn to the heavens. There is another solar system very close to the Earth. Its gravity is so powerful, I will use it to do many things. Draw the plutonium out of the polluted lands of Iraq, Afghanistan and Yugoslavia, where wars have been waged and the Allies use plutonium bullets and rockets to devastate all life. Babies being born deformed and overall totally destroying these nations. Afghanistan poppy used for heroin and sold worldwide is also contaminated with plutonium. Now in Antarctica we have photographed huge planets but do not reflect sunlight, rather reflects light of a higher wavelength from the dwarf sun which is slightly above our sight. Enlarged we see a huge planet from Nehemiah 3, Antarctica. However, why is the sun there at this time of the year? The inverted on the right. This is the sunlight line to Antarctica, so there should be no light in July. Normal axis tilt, 23.4 degrees in July. The North Pole is normally tilted towards the sun. No sun can be seen from Antarctica. But Nehemiah has sunlight, means the Earth axis. The new axis is Hearn Bay area, South United Kingdom, seen from above. The old North Pole. England. South Pole before the Dwarf Star and Solar System tilted the axis by 50 degrees plus or minus. South Pole before the Dwarf Star and Solar System in July. Darkness. Twenty first of July, however, there's the sun. The new North Pole axis is Hearn Bay. The new South Pole between Antarctica and South Africa. Antarctica rotates into the sunlight, experiencing day and night. In July, it is only possible to see the sun if the axis has tilted away from the sun and means that come January, the heat from the sun will be closest by 3.2 million miles and will send temperatures up unless the dwarf pulls the light away from the earth or blocks the sun in an eclipse. The likely outcome. That'd be 3.2, isn't it? 2 million miles? 3.2. I've got the new South Pole left and the North Pole on the right. Yes, come January, Europe and North America will bake unless light is bent away by the new dwarf. We've been observing the moon, it flipped upside down on December 11th, 2011, and since then the magnetic fields of large bodies have caused severe weather conditions, hurricanes, record lows and highs, record flooding worldwide from Australia to Europe. We drove through Austria and Switzerland, and as we were headed back to Rome, floods devastated both nations and spread across Europe. In 1991, I drove out along the Florida Keys. As I drove back into Miami, the roads had signs to evacuate. And driving to Alabama, I could see Hurricane Andrew destroying Florida. The following is Pinneberg, Germany. The sun is rising, shining on the trees in the house lower right. The sun on this side of the picture is 6 a.m. July 22nd. Eleven fifty-three. Ben's flare bottom left near a tree, a planet on the edge of the sun. Two very large faint planets, which is pulling on the Earth, tilting our axis.
Now, 2352, light from Nibiru, note how its size fluctuates. It is not the moon, it is as it is at 45 degrees altitude and in the southeast. Now on the left, the former slide, almost midnight, right the next slide, the, sorry, the next day at 1.41 on the 22nd, smaller than the next slide. The left, former slide, almost midnight, right the next day at 4.03 a.m. on the 22nd. The sky is blue but not sunshine as light on the tree is from the right. Light is beyond the trees and then a flash at 4.26 a.m. as the light from it is no longer passing through a low, long atmospheric path. Reading Luke 21, verses 28 to 32. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. And he spake to them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees, when they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh, at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. The kingdom of God is nigh at hand. What Francis is in his unmarked coffin, out of the way, the kingdom of God has come. All about. <laughs>